Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be about new makeup releases and I wanted to film this video because there are some makeup releases that have come out lately that are really really tempting me and it's not that I can't buy them, it's just that I like to purchase makeup very consciously and be aware of what I am bringing into my collection and also be aware of what I already have in my collection. So these are just makeup releases that are kind of getting me excited to purchase makeup and they're bringing me joy just by looking at them. That doesn't necessarily mean I am going to purchase them. So some of these I may kind of be talking myself out of, potentially talking myself into for some of them. So I'm just going to talk about a few of the new makeup releases that are bringing me joy right now because I do like to see the new products that come out, but I don't always like being so over consumed by all of the new makeup products. Like I definitely don't want everything and all the new releases. There are definitely specific products that appeal to me. I will be going in chronological order starting from the newest and going to the oldest. So the first one that was just released or at least the announcement was just released and actually it probably won't be by the time you're seeing this because this will probably go up in a couple of weeks. But that is the Pat McGrath Mothership 10 palette it is called Moonlit Seduction. And this palette at first, obviously it is a neutral palette, so it did really appeal to me to begin with. But the first mention I heard of this palette was from Morgan Turner here on YouTube. She is a makeup artist and I really, really love her. She does a lot of reviews over on her channel and she released a video pretty much right when this was announced, sort of analyzing the palette, trying to figure out what it really consists of and just telling us about her thoughts on it. So. Right away, I clicked on that video and at first I really, really loved the way it looked. It looked a little bit more cool tone and with Pat McGrath, she does put filters over her photos. So it's hard to see the true colors just by photos and applying the makeup to the models because her videos and photos, I feel like are so filtered. So I'm not exactly sure what the true colors of this palette will end up being. So I'm really excited to see reviews of it when it comes out. But I feel like either way this palette ends up going, no matter which photo it looks like, I will really, really like it. And I already like the color story. At first I thought it was a little bit more of a cooler palette, sort of, and this is kind of also what Morgan Turner said, sort of like a rose decadence three palette, which is what Morgan thought it was going to be. And looking at some of the photos, it actually looks a little bit warmer. So I think it will be a little bit more on the warm side, but even still, I feel like it's not too warm. Like it's still leaning more neutral, not those like super warm red, almost sunset tones. It is definitely a very neutral warm palette, which I feel like we don't see very often. I feel like a lot of palettes really go warm or really cool. There's not a lot of those like true neutral type of shades. And in the palette description, it is actually described as sort of warm tones and like a warm palette. But even then, I feel like it's not too warm, which is what really intrigues me about this palette. And also all of the shimmer special shades look so beautiful in this palette. So I'm really, really excited to see reviews for this palette. I'm not necessarily gonna purchase it at all. I probably won't because it is a Pat McGrath palette and it's so expensive. I have one Pat McGrath palette in my collection and I really cherish her because that's probably the only Pat McGrath palette I will end up ever purchasing and I actually didn't purchase it, it was a gift. But I don't really want to start collecting the Pat McGrath palettes or anything. The next product is from Rare Beauty and I feel like I just love Rare Beauty as a brand so when they release new products I really do want to try them. And this is their new Kind Words Matte Lipsticks and Lip Liners and I'm not so interested in the lip liners. For some reason the lipsticks really stand out to me just because the shades of them are so neutral and pretty. I feel like I could find like a perfect nude within that shade range but I haven't seen any reviews on these yet, so I could end up wanting to try the lip liners more so than the lipsticks. I also feel like I wear lip liners a lot more than lipsticks, so I don't 
know why the lipsticks are tempting me so much but just this range of colors looks really really beautiful because they are all sort of neutral wearable tones which is kind of what I gravitate towards when especially when I see new makeup releases I'm not really looking for those crazy colors that come out although I do like to add more unique products to my collection so again, I'm excited to see reviews of these, see what people think of them, which I'm excited to see reviews of all of these products. The next one is actually a Wayne Goss eyeshadow palette. Relatively recently, he released the Smoky Quartz palette and I saw a review from someone, I can't remember who, I can't remember who, and Kathy Reviews Beauty also talked about this palette because she loves one of the other Wayne Goss palettes. But this palette looks just like a little bit more of a cool toned version compared to his other eyeshadow palette. So I am intrigued to try this one specifically, but I also just want to try Wayne Goss in general. And the format of this eyeshadow palette isn't super appealing to me. It's six shades and the pans are really large, which I feel like I'm never going to end up going through them. But I also feel like that makes it easy for them to be used on other parts of the face. Like for example, using one of these as a blush shade, which I don't really know if that would work with this palette anyways. I feel like the pan sizes are so big, I, I would never end up using them up anyways. So... I don't know how I feel about like the format of this palette, but I really would like to try Wayne Goss, mainly because Kaguya Views Beauty raves about it a lot. <laughs> Next up from Jaclyn Cosmetics, this new sort of collection of these few products she came out with. It's called, I guess the collection is Warmth Depth Shine. So this includes a powder bronzer, which does look really beautiful and I've heard good things about. It, there's also a putty highlight that she came out with which sounds similar to sort of like the ColourPop Super Shock highlighters because it is a putty highlight but it is also really really intense because we know Jacqueline's highlights that's what she likes so that's probably not my vibe and then the thing I'm most excited for is the Pout Drip Hydrating Oil so obviously this is a lip oil and I also really like the shade range, although with lip oils, you barely see the shade because it is so sheer. So I feel like the shades don't really change all that much. Like I've seen swatches of all of these lip oils on someone's lips and there isn't like a super big difference between all of them. There's only a slight difference, which I guess some people would like if they just want a very, very, very sheer wash of color on their lips. But I feel like there's not really a point in purchasing more than one of these lip oils. So the only product within this line, I was really excited for all of these when she first came out with them because I did watch her video about them and I feel like Jacqueline sells makeup so well. So every time she talks about her products or a new launch, I literally want to buy everything. After processing it a little bit and actually thinking about it, the only product from this line that I would actually end up buying and want to buy is one of the lip oils. I probably would get the sort of deeper berry tone. I think it's actually the deepest shade in this line so far. I don't know if she's going to come out with more colors. I feel like there's not really a point in coming out with more colors because they are so sheer. But I do like the range she initially came out with and I probably would end up purchasing like that deep violet sort of shade because it doesn't show up anywhere near that deep on your lips. Next up is actually nail polish. It's from Lights Lacquer, their Funhouse collection just recently launched. I believe this is sort of their summer collection so there are some very very bright shades in here and not necessarily this specific collection that I want but I just want some Lights Lacquer polishes in general. I do have two shades in their old packaging, which some people don't like the new sort of rebranding different packaging because it's not gonna match the old ones, which if I had a lot of Lights Lacquer nail polishes, I would be kind of annoyed by that. But after looking at it, I actually kind of like the new packaging. I feel like it just looks a little bit more sleek and it's a little bit different than the average like square bottle. I mean, it's still kind of like your average nail polish bottle, but it is just really simple. And I like that they're clear so you can see the color through it. 
but like Slacker, every time they come out with a launch, it just kind of makes me want to buy some more nail polishes from them. And I know I have way too many nail polishes, so that won't happen for a really long time. But when I do end up purchasing nail polishes, it will most likely be from Light Slacker. And then one of the other new releases, and at first I was sort of back and forth on this one, but after seeing some reviews, I was really intrigued by it. And that is the ABH Nouveau palette. This is their new eyeshadow palette. And again, it is a neutral eyeshadow palette. I am drawn towards neutrals, but I like that they do have that pop of lavender or lilac in there. So that does give it a little bit of color and gives you a little bit more variety. I feel like there's also some warm tones in this palette as well. So I feel like there is kind of a split between cool and warm in this palette. So I feel like that makes the color story a little bit interesting. It's not just like a boring neutral palette. So I feel like you could get a lot of different looks out of this palette. And after seeing reviews, I think this is actually reformulated. So it's different than the old Anastasia formula. So I am kind of intrigued to try this, but again, it is just another neutral palette, so I don't really need it in my collection. I'm not tempted to actually go out and purchase it, but I do really love looking at it. Next up, another product from Pat McGrath. This was their last release before the eyeshadow palette, and that is the Divine Blush Duo. She came out with about I, five or six shades maybe. So these are duos and the packaging, first of all, is always beautiful from Pat McGrath, but the imprint on these blushes are so beautiful. And I just love something about like the split pan where you can have two different blushes or mix them together, create sort of your own little custom color is a really great idea because I feel like it gives you a lot of options with just one blush and a lot of people are saying how these duos are very similar to her initial blush collection launch where it's just like the single pan in one color but if you don't have any of the blushes from the original launch or you probably don't have all of these shades so some of the duos would probably be appealing to you obviously the average person isn't going to go out and buy the whole pat mcgrath blush collection so although people are sort of complaining that they're similar to their single blush release i feel like that doesn't really matter because most people will not have all of those blushes in their collection and the one that I've been hearing is the most unique which is the one that actually appeals to me the most probably because it is the most unique and it's sort of that cool toned type of lilac shade and it's one that I feel like I don't have in my collection is the shade Venusian Sunrise. So that is the middle shade in the top row in this photo and it is obviously a more unique blush it's probably the most unique out of all of these so that would be the one I would end up purchasing if I did end up purchasing one but again I'm not super tempted by these blushes I love looking at them because they're so beautiful but I'm most likely not gonna purchase one I also know I have way too many blushes in my collection and I rarely use powdered blushes to begin with Next up from Oma Beauty, they did do sort of like a rebrand. I guess it was just like a repackaging of their foundation and their concealer. And they actually made them fragrance free. So I think that's the only difference between the old formula and the newer formula, which is a good change, I think. And I actually really love the look of the new packaging. And I do have the foundation and I actually panned their concealer, which I really, really loved their concealer. I would consider repurchasing that in the future. So maybe at some point I will repurchase it and the new packaging kind of tempted me to repurchase it now, but I know I have a lot of concealers in my collection that I wanna get through. So I'm not gonna repurchase it now, but I am happy they came out with this new packaging. It does look really aesthetically pleasing. Like I said, I do already have their foundation in my collection and I do enjoy it. It's just a little bit more full coverage than I like for every day. And I don't tend to wear a, fo a foundation most days. I'm only wearing concealer a lot of the time. So I probably wouldn't purchase the foundation, but I do still love that they repackaged it and made it fragrance free. And then lastly, we have a new release from Makeup by Mario. These are two products and it's I believe the line is his skin transformers 
And then the two products, we have a skin enhancer, which is like a balm product. And it's supposed to be a little bit warmer to warm up your skin and just give it a little bit of color. It's not necessarily a bronzer, but it's just supposed to give a little bit of color and glow to your skin because it is a balm. And then he also came out with the Skin Perfector, which is a powder. And this is just supposed to blur the skin, give it a nice sort of illuminated finish and obviously set down the skin because it is a powder. So I believe the Skin Perfector, which is the powder is supposed to just be similar to like a finishing powder. And then the Skin Enhancer, which is the product that I'm the most interested in, is sort of a warmer balm that's just supposed to warm up the skin, obviously while also giving you a more glowy, dewy effect. So I am really interested in purchasing the balm and I have heard a, a lot of good things about actually both of these products, but I feel like I don't need a finishing powder. So I would be more inclined to purchase that cream product that's supposed to just warm up your skin. And I feel like it's just a very subtle bronzer and that just sounds really appealing and right up my alley. So. Let me know what you guys think about any of the new releases, even new releases that I didn't mention in this video. But other than that, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, I do post new videos once a week, so if you want to see more from me, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified every time I post. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.